Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. Now picture this. You quit your job, you say no to an engagement, you run off to a small town that had happy memories from childhood. You have an aunt and an uncle and cousins there, but you choose not to stay with them. You want to be independent, but you have to find a job or you have to go back to your parents. You find a job in a library. After all, you're a qualified librarian. On the night of a special event, when you should be celebrating the display of some precious books, somebody's murdered, and your new boss and new friend is accused of murder. What do you do? Well, we're about to find out, because this is what happens to the main character in this book. It's called By Book or By Crook written by Eva Gates. It's a cosy mystery, the first in the series, and I wanted to read this because it's based on being in a library, so the main character is a librarian, and it's also around books, so two things I really like, libraries and books. Also a cosy mystery, and I do like cosy mysteries. So let's dive into this book and find out what it's all about. Already in this book before we're introduced to the characters. Lucy, the main character, has moved to the Outer Banks. So all the things I mentioned at the start of this video, leaving your life, moving to a small town, giving up a job, saying no to being engaged, all that stuff has already happened to this main character, Lucy. It starts out on this special event, and they're celebrating the display of a lot of Jane Austen books from the 1800s. And they're precious books, but I got a bit confused because the books are so precious, but they're allowing people to touch them without gloves, and the librarians didn't seem to be bothered by that. So that kind of didn't feel right with me from the beginning. Also, at the start of this novel, we're introduced to a lot of characters. I mean, a lot of characters. There's so many, it's hard to keep track of them. We've got about four or five library staff in a very small library, and the library is built in a lighthouse. So that's a bit strange as well, because a lighthouse is quite narrow, but in this novel, I guess the author's taken poetic license and the lighthouse is quite wide. And Lucy also lives in an apartment in the lighthouse on the fourth floor of the renovated lighthouse. So you can see how much poetic license the author's taken just with those two ideas. But having this many characters early on is just really confusing. It's really hard to follow and you have to concentrate on the characters so much you lose a bit of the story. So it's really not a story that grabs you from the onset. There are a few characters in this novel at the start that are loud, eccentric, all that type of thing that you do expect in a cosy mystery. And I guess they're designed to grab your attention at the start, but you have to kind of pick them out and grab onto them and remember who they are with all the other characters flying around. So it's not a very easy read from the start. So we soon have a murder at this special event and the victim is a cantankerous old devil. And that's a common theme in cosy mysteries. It's often the cantankerous people are the ones that are murdered. That's because it just automatically opens up a lot of suspects. The author doesn't have to try too hard to give us a range of suspects. So the author's taken the easy way out in this first book in this series. What we also learn early on is our main character Lucy has an arch enemy. And she hasn't done anything wrong. Basically, this woman called Louise Jane thinks she should have the position in the library that Lucy has, and she'll do anything she can to get it. She'll lie, she'll wheedle, she'll try to carry favours, anything she can to get that position. And that is a continuing theme in this novel. And in some ways it's quite funny because Louise Jane becomes a very eccentric and almost central character in this story. And when she's in the scenes, they are quite fun. Even though she's trying to be nasty and conniving and it's very sneaky, they're very fun moments in the book. And she becomes a really great character and one of my favourite characters in this novel. Other than the murder, which of course is the major crime in this book, we have the theft of the books. So someone's stealing the Jane Austen books one by one, and they're stealing them in the date they're being published, so their publishing order. And that's quite interesting because it throws a lot of suspicion in the air on different people. These characters are book experts, you know, rare book experts and old book experts. That's quite clever from the author because it gives us a whole range of suspects, more than what we originally thought and it throws a few red herrings in the mix as well. 
like all cosy mysteries, while we're trying to solve the mystery, and in this case two mysteries, we also have all those wonderful character interactions, because you know, the cosy mystery is all about the characters, and we get to learn a lot more about the other staff in the library. And of course we have Lucy, who's our main character, we have a boss, Bertie, and Bertie soon becomes the main suspect in the murder, and we have a few other staff as well. And wouldn't you know it, but Louise Jane becomes a staff member of the library later on in the novel, and that just adds a lot more fun and excitement. Like I said, she's such a fun character, and I'm glad they gave her a more central role in this book. There's a whole bevy of characters in this novel to discuss, but I only want to focus on three, so I chose the three that made the most impact on me. The first is Lucy, and of course I had to choose Lucy because she's the main character. She's quite a good character, but sometimes she's written a bit strangely by the author. For instance, there's a scene when she's trying to sleep in her apartment in the lighthouse, and she hears some noises outside her door. Footsteps, they sound like, and scraping noises. And for some reason, she just thinks, oh, it's a mouse or a rat, even though they're very loud creaks, loud enough to wake her up. Why would the author write it like that? It makes her seem a bit stupid, a bit dim-witted. I thought that was a bit strange. I really don't know at this point whether I really buy into the backstory of the character, the whole running away from her good job in a university library, running away from an engagement, running away from her family, from her whole life. I'm not sure if I buy that for this character, because the character otherwise seems very sensible and very grounded and down to earth. So I'm not sure if that backstory fits the character. Maybe as we get further on in the series, and I do plan to read more books in the series, I'll understand more about the motives in the past life of the character, and maybe I'll, you know, buy that backstory more as we go on. Bertie is the head librarian in the book, and she's Lucy's boss, and she's also the murder suspect. Bertie is quite a fun character, but there are also parts to Bertie that I don't quite buy 100%. You would think being the head librarian would be enough for anybody, but no, Bertie also has to be part owner in a yoga studio and also a yoga instructor, and I'm not sure I'd buy that for the character, especially given the character's age in the book. I'm not saying that people who are a bit more mature in life can't do yoga, but it doesn't seem right that somebody that age has a full-time job as head librarian, but also teaches yoga on the side and is part owner in a yoga studio. It just didn't fit for me. Other than that, she's a good character. Her character is very strong, very caring, very independent, very funny, you know, very stubborn as well. We get that in the character a lot in this book. So I do enjoy Birdie, and I enjoy the way she interacts with the other staff in the library. I thought, other than the yoga thing going on, she's a really good character. The last character that I like to mention, and I couldn't deny this character a bit of time in the spotlight, is Louise Jane. She's just so much fun, so exciting, so interesting in this book. I think this book would have suffered a bit without a character like this. Every scene that she's in, you just know you're going to enjoy and have a good time reading. She is a bit over the top, but it works in this book because she balances out all the slow bits that happen in this book, and there are quite a few slow bits. So we need this vibrant character just to stand out a bit and offer a bit of fun and excitement. You know, it gets you excited and wants you to dive in and read more into the book. I also like the way this character just goes about doing things. Um, she doesn't care what she says seems or what she does. Those type of people in real life get annoying. You know, I don't really like people in, in real life who don't take other people's feelings and, and don't consider other people in what they do. But in this book, it just seems to work. And I do wish that Louise Jane does appear in more novels in the series. Hopefully she does. I'll cross my fingers for that. This book wasn't a bad first book in a series for a cosy mystery. It's not that strong, not overly strong as a book, but it's good enough. The mystery element is okay, but I think sometimes when the author attempted to throw red herrings our way, they were just too overdone. They were too easy to spot. So we didn't really fall for that in when I was reading it. So I think next time, well, I hope next time as we go on the series, the author 
develops those red herrings a bit better. This isn't the first cozy mystery series that I've read based in a library. I've read quite a few books in a series, I think it was called the Cat in the Stacks series. I found them quite good, and they started off a lot stronger than the first novel in this series, so I do hope this series improves. I rate this book a 3 out of 5. The reason I rate it a 3 out of 5 is, even though the characters were good, and most of the characters were good, there was something missing and something a bit off about some of them. Even the main character, I didn't 100% buy everything about the main character, so that put me off a little bit. Also, the mystery element, the red herrings weren't that strong, so I hope future books in the series are a bit stronger on that as well. As I progress in this series, every book I read, I'll review and put that video on my channel. If you don't want to miss out on those videos or videos of other cozy mystery books I read, check out my channel and subscribe. You'll also find the cozy mystery playlist on the screen now.